Thailand waits to see whether Prayut will resign today. The BTS station says its escalator accident that injured several was beyond its control, and a homeless man was saved by a motorbike taxi driver. All this is coming up in today's program. You're watching Thailand News Today, bringing you the latest top stories in Thailand and beyond. My name is Jet Gunther, and in our first story, with government house fortified like a war post, covered in barbed wire and shipping containers, protesters have gathered in heated but so far peaceful demonstrations, vowing to camp out until Prime Minister Prayutjan Osha ends his eight-year reign as Prime Minister. Thailand's constitution stipulates that no prime minister can remain in power longer than eight years. And so why is there a chance that he could stay in office? Prayut supporters would like to argue that his premiership began in April of 2017, when a new 105-page constitution drafted by the National Council for Peace and Order, basically a fancy name for the ruling military coup makers at the time, was approved by His Majesty the King. If the Constitutional Court favors the latter option, Prime Minister Prayut could continue serving as Prime Minister until April of 2025. A petition was submitted to the Constitutional Court calling for a definitive answer on the end date of Prime Minister Prayut's tenure on August the 5th, but the court has yet to come to a decision. According to the peace-loving Ties Group, leaked minutes from a constitutional drafting committee meeting held back in 2018 revealed the length of Brayut's premiership was discussed a long time ago. The minutes suggest that Brayut's premiership started three months after the military coup, meaning his premiership should end today. However, since the document has been used as levy by opposition parties, the CDC has responded by saying that the minutes were simply a discussion in a meeting attended by 30 people and are in no way evidence of a collective decision on the matter. Hundreds gathered outside the building yesterday and the numbers are expected to grow as today marks what many believe is legally the end of his eight-year term as described in the current constitution. In a recent poll, the public voted almost unanimously that Prime Minister Prayut should step down today, although the 68-year-old could sidestep that law by arguing the constitution has only been in effect for the last four years of his term. Demonstrators spoke and rallied over Laos speakers about the end of his eight-year term and urged him to step down peacefully by the law. So far, there have been no reports of violence at the protests at Government House. Though Prime Minister Brayut is not currently resigning within Government House, it is the symbolic site of power and protesters intend to continue using it as a home base for mounting demonstrations. Yesterday's protests started at Democracy Monument and marched from there, while activists from the group Kana Lom Ruom Prashashon also used space by the monument to launch their demonstrations. The protest group may make its way to Government House and join other demonstrations to start the countdown to the end of Prime Minister Prayut's term. They believe he will be an outlaw prime minister if he stays on. The Constitutional Court is currently discussing whether they will accept a petition from the Thai party to end his premiership today, though the discussion could take weeks or months. If they rule that he must step down, Deputy Prime Minister Wisanu Kriangam says it is likely that Deputy Prime Minister Prawit Wong Suwan would become the caretaker Prime Minister, while Prayut would continue in his role as the Minister of Defense. The BTS SkyTrain is offering assistance to anyone who was injured in the escalator crush, which occurred at BTS Surasak Station in Bangkok on Saturday night. However, a statement made by the chief operating director of the BTS, Mr. Sumitsi Santitam, said that the incident was, quote, beyond the BTS's control. 
as a crowd of people crammed into BTS Surasak Station to escape the rain on Saturday night, a group of people fell down an upward moving escalator. Thai media widely reported that 27 people suffered minor injuries. However, one 17 year old victim of the escalator crash was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery when her leg was torn in the fall, exposing her bone. Officials from the BTS have since visited the 17-year-old victim and presented her with a gift basket. The company did not state whether they paid for the victim's medical bills. The BTS's statement says that anyone who was injured on Saturday and needs assistance can contact the BTS Customer Relations Center. The BTS did not say what they would be offering to the victims in terms of compensation, only that injured people should contact them to discuss what assistance could be provided. Sumit apologized for the incident, but also said that it was a forced majeure. However, some victims believe the crush could have been avoided. The 17-year-old victim said that there was not a single member of staff present to control the crowd or stop people getting on the escalator. One of 12 teenage boys saved in the heroic Tam Luang Cave rescue mission in northern Thailand four years ago has been offered a scholarship to study at Brookhouse College Football Academy in Leicester, England. Duong Pet Pon Thep, who is now 17 years old, says it is his dream come true. In June of 2018, 12 members of the Wild Boars football team age 11 to 16 years old got stuck in a flooded cave system in Chiang Rai province with their 25-year-old football coach Noparat Gantawong. At the time, 13-year-old Duong Pet was the Wild Boars team captain. In an international rescue mission that involved more than 10,000 people, all 12 boys and their coach were brought out of the cave alive, the mission ending 18 days after they went missing. Saman Gunan, a 37-year-old former Thai Navy SEAL, died from asphyxiation during an attempted rescue on July the 6th after delivering diving cylinders containing oxygen to the trapped team. The next year, in 2019, rescue diver and Thai Navy SEAL Beirut Bakbara died of a blood infection that he contracted during the rescue mission. The Tam Luang Cave mission inspired three films so far, The Cave in 2019, The Rescue in 2021, and most recently, 13 Lives in 2022. A homeless man with mental health problems in a Seoul area of Bangkok has been reunited with his family thanks to the help of a thoughtful motorcycle taxi driver. The compassionate rider, Chai Yut, managed to connect the destitute man named Bon with his father after posting pictures and videos of him on his TikTok account. The 34-year-old often posts pictures and videos of homeless people in Bangkok on his TikTok account in the hopes of reuniting families. And in March, Chai Yut shared the heartwarming video of the young homeless man reuniting with his father on the street. Chai Yut recently updated the story after he met the man's father. He revealed Bon had received treatment at the psychiatric hospital, Si Thanya Hospital, and traveled back home to the southern province of Prajop Kiri Khan. The video shows a much more lively and healthy Bon wearing clean clothes and sporting a neat haircut. Bon said, I've now recovered from the illness. My weight has increased. I was about 60 kilograms when I wandered around Seoul, but it's almost 80 now. Bon added that he works as a technician at a factory near his house and wanted to thank everyone who supported and encouraged him through his recovery, especially the food sellers in the Seoul who gave him free food. He said he now has a far better life. Shayud confessed that he is delighted with the turnaround in Bon's life and hopes others can take inspiration and get help as well. And that's all for our report from Thailand News Today. The show will be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, you're now up to date on The Tiger.